Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a miniature lecture on pyorrhea, an infection in the mouth in the canine. Just about any dog, except for most Labradors and a lot of Golden Retrievers essentially, will have disgusting mouths when they get past seven or eight or years of age. What they do is accumulate tartar, which is full of bacteria. It undermines underneath the gum to the tooth essentially and produces low-grade infection in the mouth. This would be incredibly, incredibly painful in the human being if it wasn't for the, and, uh, and it would be in the dog, but the dog does not experience as much pain in their mouth as the human being does. So they can end up with a disgusting mouth, essentially. And unfortunately, we find that to be the situation. So what we do is we basically put them under light anesthetic and clean their mouth even belong beyond the gum and remove any teeth that are in fact abscessed, which is very common. It's interesting, I just had to have my dog I had that uh, uh, taken care of and the dog was eight years of age, essentially. I'm like the cobbler's just like the cobbler's kids don't have good shoes, I don't take as good a care of my own dogs perhaps as I could, but I'll insist that you take good care of your animal essentially, which is a bit um, ironic. However, one of the things that we found out with these dogs is that almost all we'd see disgusting, horrible teeth in lots and lots of breeds that were reproducible. The shoved in face dogs, the brachycephalic dogs, the dogs that basically uh, don't have a very big snout, not, not uh, to be con uh, 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 compared with dogs with, that are dolichocephalic, in other words, they've got a long nose, essentially don't have as bad a mouth as the little shoved-in faced animals do. Also, one of the things we found, too, is that these animals that have little bobble heads, essentially, for instance, are really prone to the lano-occipital subluxations and all have rotten teeth. And so we, at one point, said, wow, that's uh, an interesting consideration because what happens is that the uh, accessory uh, superficial ganglion and the uh, superficial cervical ganglion, anterior superficial cervical ganglion in the neck provide sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, input into the glands of the head and the face including the mouth involving the amount of blood supply to that particular tissue and so what happens is that we end up with because of their nature they end up with this subluxation phenomenon occurring in this area and when we would adjust that for musculoskeletal reasons we would also be unknowingly adjusting their autonomic nervous system before we actually did some out visceral therapy and what happened is their mouth problems would have a tendency to uh, calm down significantly or go away and not be recurrent and it was because of that particular th phenomenon by rehabilitating normal parasympathetic and sympathetic and blood supply to the glands of the head and the face including the mouth we were able to handle this problem a lot more effectively indicating that what we have is a somatovisceral disease even though it's on the teeth this low-grade common infection and accumulation if you will of all this tartar and by the way this tartar won't really accumulate if the animal is producing an adequate amount of saliva essentially and that saliva is healthy so what we have is we've got all the glands of the saliva glands and all the glands of the face everything running in first gear instead of uh, um, flat out like it's supposed to so our approach is to adjust these animals musculoskeletally then we adjust them somatoviscerally which includes adjusting the anterior superficial cervical ganglion and its accessory essentially and then we also will utilize a technique where we actually utilize bacteria antibacterial frequencies for the, the face and the mouth now we can actually go right on the tissue and we can do the tissue in that regard however it's not not necessary we can actually come up underneath the animal like this and remember that this particular laser penetrates bone skin muscle etc etc grows right through the animal allows us to provide this type of care in such a fashion where we can go underneath or the side or even on the top and we can come down and we can do the animal like this because the particular frequency is specific for the tissue and not having to actually nail the actual area essentially and so that's the one of the ways that we'll go ahead and take care of this by the way this is how you can take care of very effectively we've been able to take care of of severe uh, pain in the mouth such as abscess teeth that would require a, um, a job, uh, the root canal and so we can take care of the pain and also allow the, the body to handle the, the root canal and myself I had a severe amount of root canal in, in, uh, uh, pain in, for an abscessed uh, wisdom tooth and could it always happened on the weekends when uh, my dentist was out of town and so I would laser the pain away because it was excruciating and the pain would be gone and on Monday it was fine and so the following Friday would come back again well after three Fridays like that I finally made an appointment and I went in uh, and because I'd been lasering all that period of time to stay out of pain and during that period of time the body just basically rotted that tooth out of my mouth and so the dentist went in there with an elevator and just kind of rolled it out of my mouth because it was just floating 
it had been basically rotted out of my mouth, as disgusting as that sounds. Uh, we were able to, with this technology, bring the blood supply to that tissue that was abscessed and basically handle it, essentially, and that can, we can do that in the canine also. Our approach to taking care then of chronic mouth infection and also pyorrhea and also routinely would be to A, adjust them and B, use somatovisceral and C, we use laser therapy. Anytime that we do a routine dentistry, we always use laser therapy uh, for the frequencies uh, that are unique for the bacteria to keep the mouth as sterile as possible, essentially for pathogens such as the sap and the strep that are in the mouth, also the pastorella that's very commonly in the mouth. This is the same thing in the kitty cat and also for horses that have dental problems also. Uh, this has been a lecture on the uh, uh, chronic uh, uh, mouth infection and also pyorrhea, mostly in the canine, but also in other species too, including the human. You can find out more about this technology and how it works and why it works on the vomtech.com website, which you can click on essentially and get more information. I'm Dr. Inman. This has been a lecture on um, pyorrhea in domestic animals. Thank you and have a great day.